to the glory hall. Welcome to a very special episode of the hall. We have a couple of guests here. Lori, first of all, is back. Welcome back, Lori. I've been here. I know. I'm welcoming you back. I'm trying to be professional in front of Jim. Now you've already ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> we have Richie Castellano back from Blue Oyster Cult. What's up? And the, one of the reasons Richie is here, actually the only reason Richie is here, yes. is because he is a huge fan of Jim Florentine from Riotcast, Comedy Metal Midgets. Welcome back, Jim. No, it's great that um, Richie's in the band. Right. We had Buck on our, on that metal show back in the that. day, and yeah. then I'm good friends with Rudy Sarzo, who was in the band for a while. He's not in it anymore, but... Yeah, that's that show was great. I miss that show, and I'm sure you do too. I see people like telling you all the time, "You should get it on Netflix." And you're like, "Yeah, I know." Like, I, that's I just we mess with do. people because they <laughs> people tweet me like, "You should put get the show on Netflix." What about Netflix? What about YouTube? Never thought about it. Yeah, so so <laughs> so Eddie Trunk is one of the hosts on there. So he always goes crazy. Like he always answers them all the time. Like he just takes the bait. So whenever someone says, do you guys try Netflix? And I just write, great idea. What do you think? At Eddie Trunk. <laughs> <laughs> and then Eddie has to answer it. Listen, we don't own the show. I, we can't just put it on there. You know, it's 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 a whole thing. So I, people like people call it to go, man, you're desperate to get that show back. And then I go, no, I'm just, I'm doing it for three people to mess with. <laughs> like and me Eddie, and like, Eddie logs in, there's 76,000 notifications. <laughs> yeah, like Ed, I go, Eddie, how did that meeting with Netflix go last week? <laughs> you do it on Twitter. Oh, yeah, I'll do it on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good, they deserve it. <laughs> but you know, people are passionate about it. I get it. And like, for, like for you, like that's like the dream gig too to be able to meet all of those people. Like being, you know, a huge metal fan just in general. Like you were perfect for it. Yeah. No. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I didn't think at sixteen years old, sitting in my room reading the back of an album, yeah, and all the credits, I was that was going to come in handy later in life that I didn't have to do any research with these guys. Yeah, I know. But it's that's when I had um I had Frank Bello on from Anthrax. I love Frank, uh, and that was this nicest dude. And Brian Slagle was on the same episode. Same thing for me. Like I didn't. I didn't even look at anything. Like I'm sitting here asking him questions about just you know because I I even said to him like I threw up at a dumpster outside Lamore's waiting for you. And he's like, man, that's awesome. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. But it's it's like there was no pr- I didn't have to prepare anything. I was just ready to roll with that, you know, because like you, you're a fan. Most importantly, that's what I use this for is to have people who I admire come in and, and talk, get to talk to them for an hour. You know? uh, yeah, my, I, I've taken my son to uh, 16 shows so far. Yeah. Metal so shows, so yeah. Luke, Luke Florentine is here as well. Say hello, Luke. Hi. What was your <laughs> say, one more time? You got to speak up a little. Okay. Be a professional. <laughs> all right. So, what was your favorite show out of all of them? Sixteen's good. Slipknot. Slipknot. <laughs> oh, you got him. You got him good. Oh yeah. <laughs> Does he crowd surf yet? Is no, he just, hasn't done that. I came small. away from the pit. And stuff. <laughs> it's probably a good idea. So, Slipknot. Who else have you seen, Luke? Uh, I've seen Marilyn Manson. Nice. Um. Stone Sour. Nice. Who do you want to see that you haven't seen? Ozzy yet? saw Ozzy saw Black Sabbath. Oh, you gotta see. Oh, that's great. Um, I really want to see that I haven't seen. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if there's another band. You see Iron Maiden? You see no, Maiden he's yet? not a huge Iron Maiden fan. Like Probably he, Motorhead was one that he missed mm-hmm. that he didn't see. Never met Lemmy or anything like that. He's met. He met Ozzy. He's met a bunch of these dudes. But, but that's I, awesome. Like so. I know that you had on your, I think it was your serious show, you had David Lee Roth on. Yeah. At one point. Like, that had to be very cool. Oh, yeah, it was great, man. <laughs> like, I'm a huge fan of David Lee Roth. Yeah, always. I mean, who's not? I mean, it's when you when you sent, because I remember that, you know, you, you put it out on the podcast also, and you're like, yeah, I have an episode with David Lee Roth. you mind putting that? And I'm like, yeah. But I also remember there was a, a you, you had the chance to interview Metallica, but then it wasn't like what you thought it was. I seem to remember there was a Metallica interview that you did also. Yeah, well, it was questions that I had to submit through email, and they answered them. Oh, so it was just like that? So yeah, it was that like, kind of thing. Yeah, so But that was through their management and stuff. Like That's that I wanted it done. So Yeah. I, they're but nobody like, listens. If I have Metallica on my podcast, people complain. They're like, I just want you <laughs> I get bitching that. about people's Facebook well, posts. They don't like any of that. It's That's funny you say that. Let's get to that, actually, because I, I am completely blown away by your ability to just for and i've said the same thing to nick but like for you yours are about 45 minutes to an hour and it's 
hysterical for the full 45 minutes to an hour but there's no one else there like it's you like i don't have that gift i need crutches you know but like you have that gift where you just go and i don't know like how you can just keep doing it with just without even it's like flawless for you you know it's i don't know i just i I was too lazy to book guests (laughs) and in the beginning they would never show up and then i'm like i gotta get a podcast out by monday so i said i'm not dealing with this so i'll just do it myself and then i just i'll just do you know i don't need anybody else to do it with and you have me now like looking at license plates and sending them to you like i send you license plates i'm like look at this one look at this one I, i got questions yeah go so when you say, for example, like I just listened to the last one with the awful Facebook posts. Now, when someone sends you something, do you read it and start? Because if, if you haven't listened to the show and you should, um, he goes into these scenarios of what must be going on in the person's head. <laughs> do you think about that ahead of time or is that just completely off the cuff? Well, no, I'll just I'll go through them like people send me a bad Facebook post and I'll look at it and I go, yeah, I can, I can make something of this. And then I go, OK, I'll do that one and I'll go to the next one now and I'll just delete it. So I'll just have about 10 or 15 and then I'll just go with it from there. But yeah. like the scenario, like these you come up with these detailed scenarios <laughs> where like you can describe every part of the person's day while they were taking this picture. <laughs> like there was there was one. And I, I love this because I've thought about this. He said, I'm sorry, I'm going to, uh, you know, spoilers if you haven't heard this one yet. But um, there's one he's talking about someone taking a picture of themselves sick in bed right so if you're so sick how did you take the picture of yourself <laughs> right. right but then but then like he'll you'll paint this picture of the entire day of starting with you know getting someone your, your husband to take this picture of you <laughs> and i just I'm, I'm like listening to this going how how did you like concoct the story like of this person's entire day leading up to this moment because the picture was the girl in bed with the covers <laughs> just like with her, just showing a little of her eyes uh-huh. And she was saying how she's sick and she's trying to take care of her kids and she's getting better. I'm like, she obviously didn't take that picture, so her <laughs> husband did. So I'm thinking, how many takes did they have to do? Like, did she have to look at the picture? And go, no, I, I don't no, look sick enough. I don't look sick enough. Take another one. Try it from this angle. No, all right, this look. I look perfect. If I cover my eyes. You know, and I got, this is just sad that you're doing a photo shoot at, at your bed. It's it's at the point where I I literally do sometimes. Like edit like a tweet and I'll think Jim's gonna think that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I swear to God, I've done it. And not only that, we have a we have a guy that does social media for us. This guy Jeff Clark. He's in he's in L. A. and he does the retweets of all of the episodes. Like so, when you see that you know posted, he does that. I can't remember what he put, but he put something like very corny in when he promoted yours. And I called him. I'm like, dude, you have to. You, Jim is going. This is not like. That's exactly what Jim is against. Like you have to take that down right away. No, I, but I wouldn't. Have, I would just wouldn't have repost. I know. Like that. I know. But still, like from like I know enough to know like because right. I, I was like, ugh, <laughs> like, it was a bad one. Like I had him pull it. I'll, I'll try to remember what it was, but I had him pull it. But I do find myself. I think one time I tweeted, I would wish. Jim a happy birthday, but he would probably think that was gay or <laughs> something like that. That's what I don't know was. <laughs> well, when when you go like through your Facebook feed, right, mm-hmm. and you cringe at you, you inevitably cringe at things. Yeah, um, it's almost like you want to post on it or you want to say something, but you never do. Right, and this is a forum, your podcast, to just get out all that frustration. But I mean, I I feel like I'd never be able to do that just because I'd worry about it getting back to someone. Does that happen? Do people find out that you like ripped up their? Uh... No, because it's not my friends or anybody. It's people that listen to my podcast will send them in forever, and I never use people's names. Okay, yeah. I'll always keep them out. Uh, so I'm, it's never gotten back to me where people go, I can't believe you said that about my post because I don't really even know these people. It's a friend of a fan of mine somewhere, right. in Missouri, and then it's his friend that he follows. I would just be so paranoid about that. But you know, the, one of the funniest things I ever heard on your podcast was when you did get busted with the tweet of the guy next to you on the plane. Yeah. I cried. <laughs> I cried when I heard that. Do you, do you know that story? No, I don't know that There one. was a fat guy sitting next to me on the plane. So, <laughs> so we were sitting on the runway for like an hour, and I was just making jokes. I'm like, there's a fat guy next to me. He's looking at my arm like it's a mozzarella stick. <laughs> just saying stupid shit, you know? <laughs> you know, just cracking jokes. I'm just, I'm bored. It was the beginning of Twitter. It was like Twitter. I just got on there. And then the dude was just sitting there, and the plane's not going anywhere, and he's in the middle seat, and I'm in the window seat. And he's like, dude, he goes, I follow you on Twitter. Like, oh, <laughs> so what did you So he was reading all of that. But I'm was like, he cool about it? I go, dude, I'm just messing around, man. You know, I'm a comic. I'm just, you know, we exaggerate. <laughs> I'm right. trying to get out of it. I'm like, oh, shit. And he was like, oh, yeah, all right, whatever. You know, and then we started talking. He's like, how'd you get into comedy? I oh. thought it was okay, but the, we had a six-hour flight to L.A. Oh, couldn't have been yeah. the Cleveland flight. Right. No, couldn't have <laughs> been the Cleveland. No, it wasn't. So 
about an hour in, you could see how he was just stewing. Oh, you wow. know what I mean? So I didn't even get up the whole flight. And he was just, you know, so it, it was, <laughs> you it was uncomfortable. Get past him. Yeah, you should have a- asked him first if he follows you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think he did. I, You know, you usually don't think that, you know, someone you know is going to be sitting right next to you. Well, then ask him. He goes on Twitter. Yeah, just All say, right. do you follow me? Hey, the guy would be like, who are you? <laughs> like, that's the one thing on a plane I never tell. Like, if people say, what do you do? I say, I mow lawns. Yeah, that's... Because yeah. they won't ask any questions. No one's going to go, what kind of mower you have or anything. Right, right. So, so I don't want anyone to go, hey, do you follow me on Twitter? And the guy's like, why? Are you... Are you, are you famous or something? You know, because you, then you're stuck next to that yeah, guy. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, you have to be careful with that stuff. I think... Um, <laughs> what? What was that side for? What were you going to say? Yeah. I was holding my breath. Right. <laughs> I think Luke's ready for his own already. What? You want to do your own podcast? Yeah, though? I think so. With who? Yeah. Awful kindergarten kids. Yeah. Awful. <laughs> I'm in second grade. I know, mm-hmm. I know. Well, you have a memory of him. <laughs> oh, he's got no. a new joke he just came up with at, at dinner. Let's hear it. At the Because he goes on stage and he tells jokes now. <laughs> so, really? Yeah, yeah. He's been up, so he's got a new one. Okay, let's have it. Okay, so when I'm done... Upstage, um, the people go up to me and say, "Oh, you were great on stage. You have an Instagram page." I said, "I don't have an Instagram page, but you you can um, find me on Grinder." <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right, turn exactly. Jesus, I'm gonna turn this mic off. Okay, so look, no. <laughs> he came up with that on his own. He goes, "I'm gonna say so because he he heard it on what some TV show or whatever. It's this YouTube thing, you know, Grinder. It's the gay, and he always makes fun of my uh, my nephew. He's oh, like really? 22. He's like, you're on Grinder. Come on, you mean, you mean guys on Grinder? So like that, that's his big thing. He busts my nephew's that's, balls all the time. It's brilliant. Look, I'm gonna tell you the truth, Luke. I was I was preparing myself to fake laugh, and I did not have to fake laugh for that. That was great. <laughs> oh man. So is that what you want to do? You want to be a comic too, like your dad? Uh, I don't know. You know he's good. Know? He's really good at uh, music too. Oh he's yeah. He's been taking music classes for four and a half years. What now. instrument? He'll sing, play drums, keyboards. He knows half of Mr. Crowley on the keyboards. Oh, awesome. That's more than I do. Um, and, but he comes up with lyrics or songs and everything like that. He's good. So That's very cool. We'll see. He said, Dad, I want to live in a mansion. I go, well, then you have to be a comedian or a musician probably is going to be your the yeah. best way for you to do it. Yeah. <laughs> a nine to five job is going to be tough. Yeah, that's going to be tough. And I could tell he's not like a numbers kid. He's not going to want to be like, you know an accountant or anything like that so i think yeah. that's his path well you know a lot of the, like a lot of your humor like i get uh, everybody gets their sense of humor from their parents you know for the most part and your friends those are the two combos you know either your friends or or your or your mom and dad are you any of your friends funny my friend john mm-hmm. is jim is he yeah john yeah he's pretty funny Just yeah making sure <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. Wait. Speaking of numbers, not being a number kid, I can get that because I I, I got a, a C on my math grade. That by the way. Yeah. yeah so probably music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, he gets good grades too. But we'll see. You know, once he starts getting into girls, yeah. seventh, eighth, ninth grade, yeah, he's forget have it. To impress them. Yeah. Exactly. That's when the jokes are really skills. gonna. Yeah. And that's <laughs> where our podcast really comes in handy. <laughs> Jim, yeah, I mean, is your dad funny? My dad was funny. Yeah. Yeah, he was a ball buster. The whole yeah. family's just ball busters. Your friend, uh, I love the story. Um, I don't think you definitely didn't tell on the show, but I love the story of the way you kind of got in was through dice, of all people. Like you had, you follow, you go to see Dice, and he had that horrible album, right? That like yeah, well, the day to laugh, yeah, die. the day to laugh to die, which is you know, like almost a performance art in a way. Like it's and. I don't want to tell the story for you. You're on, you're on the show, but I'm just trying to remember. No, I well, just what how I met him. Yeah, like did he, didn't he, didn't you go up and do the set? Yeah, well, me and Jim Norton, our first day in L.A., we we were on uh, Louis Anderson at like a, a comedy showcase. It was called like on NBC, so we got booked on. It was like a Friday night, late night show. So they flew us to L.A. to be on the show. Our first day in L.A., we go to the comedy store because we heard about it. And Dice is there, and we see him in the back, and he's talking to Rich Voss, and we knew Voss. Mm -hmm. So we're like, oh, man, there's Dice, and we love Dice, me and Norton. And we started together, that's all we do is listen to old Dice records. And there's a record he put out where he completely bombs, and people are walking out. It's called The Day the Laughter Died. It's the greatest record ever. (laughs) He's got no jokes. People are screaming at him. He's screaming back. There's like seven people in the audience. So we eventually go up to him. We start talking to him. 
And I go, yeah, we like those albums where you bomb. He goes, I don't remember. What did I say on there? Me and Norton started reciting the jokes. And he's laughing. He goes, can you guys go on stage tonight and do those jokes for me and my friends? He goes, and we'll be in the back of the room. I go, yeah, if we can. And he told the manager. So we went on to the comedy store, me and Jim, with two mics. And just went back and forth telling these like bad jokes that he had on the album. No one was laughing except right. for Dice and his buddies in the back. <laughs> and then we wound up being friends with Dice. And then Jim Jim got to open for him at first. And then he brought Norton on Opie and Anthony. And Opie and Anthony loved him. They're like, oh, my God, who's this? This guy's crazy. Yeah. All the stories and everything. So Jim gets the sidekick job at Opie and Anthony. And then, you know, I become friends with Dice. I open for him. Jim does. So it was a whole thing. And it was yeah. all because we went up to him. We were big fans. And he was an inspiration. I was mowing lawns. Had no what I, no idea what I was going to do with my life. Just drinking, you know, Friday afternoon, getting a case of beer with my buddies, just drinking. And he came on that Dangerfield special, that seven minutes. Oh, yeah, that was. With the leather jacket. Yep. It was unbelievable. And I was like, man, that's what I want to do. Yeah. And, and the- it took me a few years to get back up to go on stage and actually do it. But. I knew right there that's what I wanted to do. So the first time that you ever did it, like, did it did it go well or did it like did you bomb? The it first was time terrible, or? and everyone always says every comic goes, "Oh, I did great." No, you didn't. I want to listen to that tape. Right, <laughs> you didn't do good. No, I, but I did get one laugh. Uh, someone said something in the audience, a heckler, and I said something back. Ah, do you? And I felt that adrenaline. I don't know what it yeah. was, but that adrenaline just like, oh man. It was like an orgasm. Yeah, like, this well, you is amazing. Feel the first one, yeah. Yeah, so I went like an open mic night down in uh, Florida. Speaking of heckling, <laughs> remember my first time on stage? Uh... <laughs> yeah, what? Remember that girl? Uh, he doesn't like when a girl says he's cute. It drives him nuts. <laughs> so a woman goes, oh, you're so cute, and it messed him up. And he got all mad. He got frazzles. I said, next time, just say, hey, shut up. (laughs) (laughs) So I've been waiting for that moment for like, since I was five. So like three years, I've been waiting to tell someone to shut up. I'm not going to be that woman. (laughs) There's going to come a point, though, when you get to a certain age where when a girl says you're cute, you're not going to tell her to shut up. Well, if it's my girlfriend. There you go. (laughs) So, So did you... so? Do you remember, like, when you first started working on the first material and, like, were you just, like, writing it in a notebook? Were you practicing it by yourself before you do it? Yeah. Like, I'm always fascinated by that. Like, obviously, I get to work with incredibly talented people like you and Jim and Bobby and all of these people. But I I've, I've see them now, you know, and they are at their peaks and they are at their best. But I always wonder, like, when you first want to start doing that like what's the process does everybody have a similar thing like do you practice it like what did you do uh, the first time i went on stage it was in florida mm-hmm. i went on vacation to Fort Lauderdale there with my girlfriend at the time i brought my notebook i was writing jokes i was just didn't have the balls to get on stage but i figured i'd bring the book down there maybe i can write on the beach or whatever we're on vacation we have this beautiful place on the beach in Fort Lauderdale that we uh, got for the week. And we were driving from the airport, and I saw this place, Tuesday night, open mic night, comedy night. And I saw it, I'm like, oh, shit. I go, I can go on there because nobody's going to know who I am. Yeah. I said, because I didn't want to go in front of my friends. I'm like, this is going to be embarrassing. Right, yeah, that's the thing. So I just so I went I went there, and I signed up. And I ruined our whole vacation because, <laughs> because all I did was just thinking about my set. I was walking up and down the beach just rehearsing my practicing lines, it, yeah. practicing, and she was so mad. She yeah. came to the show with me, too, but even after that, it was just like, there was only like two days left in the vacation, but I was just writing. I'm going over jokes. I'm like, you think this is funny? She's like, can we just, this is our vacation. I'm like, so she broke on me like a week ago. Ah, too bad. Do you steal jokes? Like I would steal jokes just to get the cadence down. No, no, I didn't steal any, but um, I definitely sounded like No, you stole mine. Twice. Did he? It's a t- <laughs> Same one. Twice. Which, which one was it, Luke? Dad's gay and um, <laughs> I love Luke. And my mom getting married for the f- uh, fourth time. <laughs> <laughs> but I was there when he did it the first time. I climbed up on stage and started punching him. <laughs> Yeah, well, he was at one of my shows. He didn't want to do any of his jokes. He didn't want to come up. He called I was me. tired. We didn't get back home until like 11. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of ship are you running here, Jim? <laughs> Looks like 36 years old. <laughs> I know. That's great. He's, Jim is a stage mom. <laughs> yeah, so I said, are you going to go up? He goes, no, I'm tired. I'm not going to. So then I was telling him how my son does stand up, and I gave a couple examples of his jokes. Which- Speak up. And then he got mad. He's like, and he came up. He's like, you're doing my jokes. I go, because you said you weren't going on. 
Yeah, that doesn't mean you steal my joke. <laughs> what are you, what? Artie Lang, who steals like like <laughs> five comics <laughs> to jokes? Artie ever. Lang doesn't steal jokes. <laughs> no, he doesn't. I, I think he knows Artie. He loves Artie. I think it's pretty clear what he wants to do. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I think it's really clear. He he was all psyched because he he was on Chip Chipperson. Once. Oh yeah, you were on Chip too. Oh yeah, he loves it. He, he's like, I got we want to go back on. Yeah, that was good. The, he Chip is uh, a very interesting person, just in general. <laughs> it's one way to put it <laughs> for sure. You like Chip? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, so like, what was the point that you ever have? Like, what's your first gig that you were like, wow, that went well. Like, I can, I, I think I'm gonna do this because like it, it, it takes balls to do it the first time, and and bomb, and then just want to do it again, and 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 know you can. I mean, you're a funny person just when I talk to you. So you know, it's, I just it's went cool. to an open mic night. There was an amateur night, like open mic with musicians and bands. That'd be Tuesday at this place in New Jersey, mm-hmm. and it was near my house. So I would just go up every Tuesday and just keep writing, and I have all my friends come, which helped. Uh-huh, that's you know, because they would all be in the crowd and they were supportive. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, just did it from there and then eventually worked my way in New York City and stuff. So, you know, yeah, it's, but it's just, you know, it's a grind. But I like that. I like the whole process. Yeah. That's- you know, but then in the beginning when you really bomb, like you're always funny in front of your friends when they come, like 10 <laughs> or 12 of them. They know your sense of humor and you're dirty. Right. But then when you perform for, uh, like, you know, people that don't know you for the first time, they're just staring at you. Like, we don't get this at all. Yeah, especially like if you're... An open mic night just for comics too. Like, there could be a bunch of bad ones in a row. So by the time you get up there, they're already like jaded and not really in the mood for any of it. Yeah, and uh, you know, guys like Rich Voss and uh, Bob Levy, uh, they were around for a while before I even started. So they took a liking to me and Norton. So they took us on the road early. We we're only doing a comedy a few months. That's good. And they That's took a lot so that we were open for them. You know, get paid like twenty five bucks to do ten minutes. That's good. And, and they had all connections. So we were working a lot right off the bat. And Bob Levy had a big drinking problem, so his wife didn't want him driving. So me and Jim, were, you know, we're like, all right, we'll drive. So we got so many gigs because she didn't want Bob behind the wheel. <laughs> Just so I'm like, good, keep drinking, Bob. This is beautiful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We had Bob on the show. He was I fun. love Bob. Yeah, he was fun. He's a really nice guy. He's um. So you you. I mean, Artie Lang had come up. I don't want to. Not so much to get into him, but so you have not been on Stern again since Robin, right? That's, no, I've been on. You have been yeah, on. Yeah, since? I've been on. Uh, I was on three times since after we broke up. But look, the show's changed, so it's not really. They're on three days a week. It's more celebrities on. They're not really having B or C level comics on anymore. So yeah. I do the wrap up show whenever I got something to promote. Was it was it awkward for you at first, like when you? No, no. I mean, it was. It, it, you know, that room is always awkward when you yeah, go in. I guess that's true. You got snipers coming from everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> if they're not in the studio with somebody in the office coming in, going, "Hey, yeah. I, Jim's. Uh, I heard Jim's friend uh, sticks his finger in his ass." Like, oh, yeah, yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah. you know. So yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so no, it wasn't awkward. I mean, whatever. I mean, that's what that's what's great about that show. You sit in a hot seat and you get grilled. Yeah, but did you, like, did you think when it was done that you might not go back? No, I didn't think that because we we ended on amicable terms and we're still, you know, I still see her here once in a while. I see her up at Sirius and I did a Don Buck Wall roast about like nine months ago and I saw mm-hmm. her there. We sat at the same table. We we're roasting each other up there and stuff. Oh, that's so. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm glad it went down like that. Too. I'm friends with all those guys up there. They're all cool. And look, all these guys that bash Howard Stern because they can't get on anymore. It's like, hey. That, I, I tell people, I go, that guy bought me a house, yeah. so I'll never say anything bad about him. He okay. took a chance on me when nobody else did. Yeah, and, and maybe you know, he's a launching pad for comedians. It was just like Johnny Carson back in the day. He'd have comics on, and then you know, you get your exposure, and then go do your own thing, go get your own sitcom, your TV show, whatever. Yeah. He does he puts you on for a little while, and then he moves on to somebody else, which is fine. Yeah, he even took people like Pat Cooper, who yeah. was was on the you know the client. I mean, not that he became huge again, but he was for a while became a household name because of that show yeah you know that show did a lot for a lot of people and um you know you, did you do any of the roasts yeah you did right i think i, I could, did most of them i did the Artie roast i was Ronnie, at the gary one i think you were ralph I, I was in the studio for the gary one. i didn't do the gary one that was the only one i didn't do yeah i tell you and i didn't do the daniel carver one. Uh, oh, okay I, one that you were awesome <laughs> he's recording <laughs> you back <laughs> One of the ones that you did, I th- the Voss roast, you were fantastic. Like you were the you were the best of the bunch, without a doubt on the vo- the Voss roast. Yeah, I like roasting. I like doing roasts. I've done a bunch of them. Even the rock star, I did D Snyder. 
I did Sebastian Bach. I've done uh, Corey Taylor. So I like doing those. What? Those are uh, those. You know, I, lo- I love doing writing jokes like that. And look, you got to go up there and not take anything personally. You know, you can't go out of there and go and you know I'm not gonna, you know, get mad at whatever somebody says. That ever happened to you where that happened? Where you did no. something in a roast and somebody had something to say? I mean, if it's all comics, I could understand. There was a couple like they they did one for like Ann Coulter was getting all upset. I think because they're really heavy. No, she high. didn't get mad at it. They were just everybody just called her a cunt basically, <laughs> and she's like, okay, is that all you got? No, she's got a good sense of humor. I've done talk shows with her before. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know that's you know that's a prime target to put on there. Yeah, I know. You, you know what I mean? You, yeah, you're putting on Comedy Central roast Ann Coulter, of course, they're going to go after yeah, It's her. almost an easy thing. Like if yeah. Ob- Michelle Obama was on the roast, would they say anything? Yeah, I don't think people would be calling her a cunt. No, exactly. Saying. I know. <laughs> I don't think that would have happened. Yeah. But um, so, so now with the, with the podcast, so it's, it's funny because I don't think there's any other show that could have 30 episodes all named – Awful Facebook posts or awful <laughs> vanity plates or any of them. Like, and like I'll get them. So, like, Jim will send them to me, like, you know, on a Friday or a Saturday to, to post. And when I get it, like, I had to start dating them because, like, there's 40 of them called awful Facebook posts. Awful and, Facebook and, posts, yeah. part 28, part 29. <laughs> but for me, like, I'll see that and I don't go, okay, this is just another Facebook post. I'm like, all right, it's another Facebook. Like, I get excited for it. But Jim does what you and I like do on the side, where we have our our certain people we make fun of, right. but just to ourselves, right? Because well, we're scared. Yeah, right. No, he just does it straight yeah. out. He, but these are our anonymous people most of, most of the time. Yeah. Like I don't, unless I'm talking about celebrities or something happened. No, there's a woman that's like, I'm fucking sick. I'm covering my face, and he's making fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> The, the best, I think, the best thing about these shows, even though there's a lot of them, is the use of negative space. Because when I'm listening with my friends, the thing that rips us up is when there's just a long pause followed by a. Uh, <laughs> that's, my, exactly. that's our favorite thing. And, and you know what? Like I, I see the whole like wave from when I get it, and you see clips. So you know, part of what I have to do is make sure it's not cut off or there's a problem with the sound. So I'll look for those because I can't listen to every one while before I post it. So I'll look for that and I'll play it. It'll just be dead silence. I go, oh shit, and then I'll just hear. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> like, so you see it because it, like, it really aggravates. Me. I know like, I you really, can I see just, that like, it I, does. Yeah, I mean, I'm, there was a prank call I did, you know, 15 years ago where there was an 18 second pause in between me and the other guy because I was fucking with him oh. and he didn't know what to do and he got so frustrated he wasn't saying anything and I wasn't saying anything either and I'm just like, love the 10, I kept it in there. Like, I remember we were editing, like, we should cut that down. I go, no, no, leave it at 18 leave. seconds. That's the real time where it's just silence. <laughs> Those are, like, so I want to, the terrorizing telemarketers That's that my you did. favorite. They're, they're so good, but like, so... Were you just ready to record whenever they had called, or did you like intentionally submit for certain things to get more of those calls, or were you just little, ready to go? A little bit of both, but I always, I had a recorder hooked up to the phone, so I could just hit record and play when the phone rang. Anytime, yeah. Yeah, but I had a friends I had friends that had a lot of businesses in the area, so if I was sitting by the phone that day, I'd call them up. I go, hey. If any telemarketers call, which they call the business all the time, just give my number. Say you're, he's here. <laughs> so I'd cool. answer to any name. So they'd be like, you know, Raul. I'm like, yeah, this is Raul. You know, <laughs> whoever. I don't give a shit. I'll answer to anything. So I get an influx of those calls, and then we'd fill out forms if we're not getting any calls. Uh-huh. Like if you go to a mortgage site, say you need a mortgage or something, right? Or yes. you need a loan, forget it. We just with it, you fill that out as soon as you put that number. Within three minutes, they're calling. They're calling you. Yeah, that's calling. a great idea to get them to call you because yeah, because that's the thing is they're all calling you. It's and like, they don't think that like why would someone fill out a form like right. this whole just thing to break my balls. <laughs> just to break my balls? Like there's no way somebody would do this. Don't you know? Don't people have better better things to do during the day? But I really didn't. I don't believe. I didn't. <laughs> But like that that's that's the part that made it stand out between all the others cuz they were all calling you. Like it wasn't it wasn't like you were prank calling people because you got a lot more patience out of them and they they hung in there longer because they were making the call to you. So they're the ones soliciting you. So you you were able to keep them on for a lot longer and some of them were absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> so but stupid. I st- I don't understand like how some of these people just hung in there with you as long as they did. It was great. I think because they realized that, okay, this person didn't curse or didn't hang up. He's always very right. polite. 
Yeah, he's yeah. weird. This yeah, is weird. He's very weird. I've never very had weird. a deal with you know a guy giving his grandfather a bath. But <laughs> all right, I guess uh, he's still on the phone. <laughs> and I'd always play it miss. I'm just trying to get the information. I, I don't know. I'm just right. trying to get the information. Like I'm an idiot. But never laugh. Like to think that I'm messing with him. I know. It's just yeah. it's, know. It's, it's really justice because everybody hates telemarketer phone calls. So the fact that he's receiving them and not making them, it's just like he's doing what everybody wishes they could do. And what's what's brilliant about it. Yeah, I know. It's it's true. And then, you know, so does Crank Yankers come from that? Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, I got that. Well, Howard started playing my telemarketer calls and Jimmy Kimmel heard them in Corolla and they, they were part of Crank Yankers. Yeah, because they were at the time doing the man show, right? And, yeah, yeah, so they had an idea. They, like, they were like, who is this dude making these calls? We want, to, we want him as a character on the show. I was only on about three or four times. Yeah. You know, and then oh, they heard my stuff and got in touch with my manager. It's great. And it's uh, like a lot of things about that show. And actually, there's another thing I wanted to ask you is that especially with, you know, the type the type of humor that you have, like a lot of those things couldn't get done now. Like they wouldn't do like even a character special. They would never do anything like that now, you know. So like, do you find do you do anything differently now because of the landscape and the way like people just take every little thing so sensitively. Or like you, you, you haven't worn blackface in a while, right? <laughs> yeah, right. You know, it's still. It's still I did dress up like OJ, like right after uh, <laughs> after the murder for, for Halloween. I put an OJ mask on and I put like blood all over me. I put the coal in the back. Thirty two. <laughs> Nobody talked me at this Halloween party. I sat in the corner by myself, my OJ mask, and just drank. That's a great idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like you know, all these these comics are getting shit for everything now. It's getting it's getting ridiculous. You know. You know, I always ask the comedy club owners around the country when I go there, I go, are more people walking out complaining? And they say, no, it's really not happening in the clubs, Right. you know, where people are walking out. Maybe at a bigger t- time, come, but they're now they're recording their sets and they're going, they're pulling a little clip out and go, look how horrible right, this to is. to make it sound. Real. To make it sound like, you know, but, but that's always been comedy clubs. That's where we work on stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, Louis stuff wasn't even honed. He just has an idea. I've been working on an idea about... Um, uh, yeah, uh, you know about like you know I gotta ke- give him a speech in a few years about the teachers trying to have sex with them, and it's pretty brutal. I'm trying to figure it out. I've been doing it for like the last ten times on stage. I don't know where it's going. I'm still, but it's it's vicious right now. I'll soften it up, and I might get, or I just have to drop the bit. But I'm still trying to work on it. Yeah. So if you took that that bit, and you're like, oh my god, can you believe he said that? Yeah, of course, but. Um, I don't, they're not really coming in the comedy clubs. The people, they say, look, people do research. They know what the comics, everyone has a clip online. And the people that would be offended usually don't come to a comedy club anymore. Yeah, good. They know to stay away, which is good. So the, the comedy clubs on the road, it's not happening where people are, are running out in droves. That's awesome. It must be just colleges. I hear That's colleges. always been. Yeah. Oh, I said the been? word chick in 1995. I was doing comedy a couple of years. I said the word chick at a college. I said, because I look like a chick because I had long hair and a joke oh. and a punchline, and they withheld my pay because oh they God. said I was sexist for saying the word chick. Oh. <laughs> this is in 1995. Yeah, it's so one of like those SUNY Purchase schools up in Albany or somewhere around that's there. That's where I went to college. <laughs> you went to Purchase? Yeah. <laughs> you it's did? probably Richie who complained. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> so we just knew if you were an edgy comic, just stay away from the colleges. Yeah. Because then you have to write an act to just cater to them, just like if you're going to do a cruise ship. You have to write an act cater to that, and you're gonna stink. You're gonna stink as a comic. Yeah, you got to just do what you want to do, and, and let yeah. the chips fall where they may. I guess you know. There's always more money in colleges, but then you got to write an act for like children, basically. Yeah, I know. It's uh, and, and if you're a white male, you you had no shot in 1995. Yeah. There was a couple white males doing it. You know, you have to be a black lesbian transitioning, <laughs> and then you'll do <laughs> every stage school. transition. Yeah. <laughs> so I never even worried about it. Like, I didn't even bum me out. I just did a few. I made a few bucks, and I was like, fuck it. I'm not doing them. Yeah. What Luke happened? already can't do schools. That's already <laughs> too dirty. I know. You do got some dirty jokes. Do you... What? <laughs> <laughs> so you so you bring him up at your gigs to do, to do a yeah if I if I have him when I'm working yeah he'll come up and I'll, he's got about four jokes that's cool he was working on a we went to an open mic a couple weeks ago mm-hmm. and uh, he was working on his jokes Are some you guy actually him? huh Are you paying him Yeah he gets like twenty bucks or whatever you, he's made some money we that's put good. in a little frame the one 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 old guy got mad after the show and complained to the club owner about him. 
He said, how could you put that kid on stage? He was disrespectful to his dad with those jokes he was saying. <laughs> that, how could you do And he's like, it's a comedy club. He goes, yeah, but he's making jokes. How could you do I said, look, that you're a real comic now. When you're pushing <laughs> yeah, buttons, exactly. that means you're good. Yeah. That guy hated you, too. Yeah, he did. He said he wanted to punch <laughs> the father in the face, me. No, but when wow. you were on, he was like whispering to his like wife or something. He was like... <laughs> yeah, whatever. You ever you ever have that? You ever have somebody like confront you after a gig? Because I know some somebody just like broke a bottle of like Nick DePaulo, like punched Nick DePaulo. No, a girl punched like, him. A yeah. girl punched him. Yeah. yeah, like in the middle of his set. Really? Yeah, like went after him and yeah. punched him. Like no, this is no, this yeah, but yeah, about, about, about eight a months year. ago. Yeah, it was what? under a year ago. After the show, yeah. Yeah, she went up to Why? him and sucker punched him. Did he did he heckle her or something? Or, no, or? The, the, he was doing like a meet and greet after the show. He was in the lobby just saying hello to people. And this guy came up and he goes, hey, I love your show, but my daughter wants to punch you in the face. He's like, okay, whatever. And then all of a sudden he got blindsided by her do- by her daughter. It hit him right. What is wrong with this people? This is why I, I hate humans. Face. I know. Remember Leah Bond? Well, you that. are a human. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jury's still out, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> but what were you going to say? Oh, Remember yeah, Leah Luke. got attacked on stage. Yeah, somebody like gave her a hard time and started yelling at her. I mean, I usually it doesn't happen. I'll push buttons. I'll go after people. You know, just you know, go into the crowd and stuff. I usually know when the lay lo- the lay off uh-huh. or someone's getting annoyed. So I've never had that where people wanted to fight me after. Well, a show. it's a mobster looking dude. Those are the ones you stay away from too. Well, yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you mostly play for like random audiences, or or is it mostly like? Jim Florentine fans. It's a little of both. You know, in the city, they don't know who you are, most of them. You know what you do to these rooms, 90%, which is good, because then you can really gauge if your material's working or not. Mm-hmm. You know, when you perform in front of people like you that know you, it's a lot easier. Yeah, because they, they're already fans. and they're Yeah, already, you know. which is good, though, too, because you've been busting your balls for years. You've you know, it's almost it, yeah. like a band. You know, when you got when you got hits to play, and it, you know they're going to like them. Yeah. Like, good, good. You know, we know we're going to get a, a good response to this. Yeah. We, we were talking about that before. Like, there's certain songs that Richie has to play with Blue Oyster Cult, whether he likes it or not. And, you know, certain ones that... Uh, that you do. I like all the songs, Rob. No, you know what I mean. <laughs> no, but you've you've. There are certain ones he like, likes some more that than you, others. Yeah, of course. Well, you know, uh, with us, it's like if but we were t- we were like, talking about the difference between the you know uh, playing festivals, arenas, or small clubs uh, or theaters, and I like the smaller gigs because those are we know that those are our fans, so we can play some deep tracks as opposed to when you do like a summer festival with. 50 bands on it you gotta it's like you know get in get out play the stuff they know and that's it yeah so, so you wind up doing yeah. like godzilla and burning for you and Reaper i mean we and... do some uh, we have some deep tracks we'll play you know on in a regular set but we can really do some some crazy stuff when we know it's an audience of people that just came to see us mm-hmm. yeah i i mean but uh his story is really funny too because his is very similar to the movie Rockstar. Like, he got a phone call and didn't believe he thought it was a goof. Like, when they called you to be in the yeah. band. Like, who, you hung up on, on Eric? On Eric. Or, on Eric Bloom. <laughs> I, well, okay, I, it's not exactly the same. I'd been working for them as a sound guy for, for like, two or three years. And Eric called me up one morning. I was, I was asleep in my mother's house. And he goes, hey, do you play bass? I'm like, yeah. He's like, do you have a bass? I said, yeah. Who is this? He goes, it's Eric. Okay, you're on the gig on Friday. Uh, call me later. And I hung up and I went back to bed because I didn't realize what just happened. And then I like woke up five minutes later. I'm like, did did I just what just happened? And I called him back. Did you call me or did I dream this? Yeah. And he's like, no, no, you're on the gig on Friday. You have to learn 21 songs. I said, oh shit. So you had to learn 21 Blue Voice. And this is Blue Voice of Cult songs. So there's a lot of like yeah, 21, intense 22. stuff well, going on. What what happened is I was like really eager to to please at that point. I was uh, I was 24. And I really wanted this to work. So he gave me initially 18 songs, and he called me back like an hour later. And he was like, so, you know, how are you doing? Oh, I got him. No problem. He goes, okay, learn four more. Like, oh, <laughs> but you didn't have the 18, though. <laughs> no. But, like, he's he's a talented musician to a level, like, that just aggravates me. Like oh, he, stop. Yeah, I know. But you can say that all you want. But, like, he's – the reason why – how I got to know him, there's a, there's a video going around on – it was on Facebook. It was everywhere. It was – him playing Bohemian Rhapsody, every single instrument, like with multi cameras, and, mul- and and it was incredible. Like it sounded like every part was great. 
So that's how he, and I didn't even know he was in Blue Oyster Cult like when I booked him to come on. Then I found that out even, la- you know, a little later on. But since then, like he has a podcast on Riotcast called Band Geek now, and they just, they, you know, deconstruct songs and they, they rebuild them. And it's incredible. Like you, you definitely, and I'm glad you brought the guitar because I'm going to put you on the spot and make you show off at some <laughs> point. But, but like, like that actually, you have like millions of views on some of these and, and yeah. like Brian May like retweet, retweeted it at one point, put it on his website. I yeah. Think, he put right? it on his website. He put a link to it. It was cool. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was cool. Yeah. It's a lie, Luke. <laughs> they met on Grinder. <laughs> <laughs> he knows Queen. Yeah. Right, I can't wait for Luke's book. <laughs> book yeah, I know. That you're gonna write. Well, I wrote a book in first grade. It was about a casino robbery. Wow! Really? Wow! Atlantic City or Las Vegas? Las Vegas. I like it already. Um, the two robbers <laughs> are called Jimmy and Steve. <laughs> was one the, your dad? Yeah. Because I thought of Steve because it was on a, a Wednesday and. We he went to New York and we and he did a show and I went on and he did a joke about a guy named uh, like his name was Steve. So then I and then I recognized that joke in my head. I'm like, oh, maybe the robbers can name Steve. And then that's where I got Jimmy from. Wait, and then what happened? The getaway guy took off when they robbed the casino. Yeah, the, no, because the getaway guy go- um guy was the. One of the officers, when they got arrested, like when they were young, so they were like, "What am I doing?" When he, because he was like on the day, he was like, "What am I doing?" So he just drove away, and <laughs> and then they realized, so they had to run through this casino because there was security, cops, and SWAT. And SWAT team. So right. So so the, so the getaway car took off, and they they went out there, and what they weren't there. Just it, it's just like the. TV show Escape from the Danamora. Oh, I just watched that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he liked that one. He's got that a sharp a one. brain on him. Tilly. He's right? a sharp kid. Absolutely. Tilly never showed up. I know. Mm-hmm. They were she all had set. a heart attack. That was the best. Do you remember that they do? You, do you know what we're talking? Luke no. and I are talking about. Here? <laughs> no, bring me in the Those world. Those two guys that escaped jail in a uh, upstate New Clinton, York, New York. Uh-huh. It was from a couple of years ago, and they were on the run, and they were having sex. Oh, with the, I do remember the yeah, woman yeah. that worked. Yeah, it was the, the guard, and, right? And yeah. the New York Post, they named her Shawskank. <laughs> it's like, oh, how do you how do you come up with such a headline? So good. Oh, it was great, great series on Showtime. Yeah. So that's the actual story of it. I have to watch that. Yeah, I uh, I thought I would just watch one episode. I it ended up just being my day. I didn't go to work. <laughs> I, I couldn't. Saw, I saw another one where the guy they they took this guy and they put a bomb around his neck. Oh, that's the one I told you what about. Was it Evil yeah. genius. Evil genius. That's yeah. a great one too. Yeah. That was that's insane. crazy. Like that that. That dude, but like, but that's a documentary. The one that Luke and I are talking about, that's a. It's like a, a reenactment. Yeah, it's like it? Paul Dano, oh, okay. the actor, and um, Benicio del, del Toro is in it. And, oh, uh, yeah, it's eight, eight, eight. No, Patricia Arquette. Yeah, Patricia Arquette. It's eight eight uh, episodes. The TV show I really liked that <laughs> my dad started watching was The Sopranos. That's a I good like one. That's a good they're one. They're gonna. Awesome. I think they're making a new one. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So one, like, I, my dad just bought me a cap gun that looks like a real gun. And so <laughs> I put on sweatpants, my white shoes, and then put on a shirt and then a leather jacket. <laughs> and then and then I started kicking, like, the walls in the backyard. I'm, I'm like, Chris, where's my money by tomorrow? <laughs> and I started speaking Italian. Where's my money by the tomorrow? Where's the money by the tomorrow? And I pulled the gun out of my jacket. I'm like, where's the money tomorrow? And, shoot <laughs> the, we hold and, I, just, and then I just shot the caps at the wall. You're never going to have to work soon, Jim. <laughs> no, I know. Well, he had a whole thing. He said, all right, I want to be in a band, right? And you're going to be the manager of the band. 
So you're going to collect the money at the end of the night, and you're also going to be the tour bus driver. Wow, he didn't he didn't even think to put you in the band. That's kind no, of no, up. no, no. So him and his friends are going <laughs> to be in game. the back of the bus, and then I have to drive, and then they'll wake up in the morning, and we're in the next let's city. Give, let's give Dad more jobs. Yeah, let's <laughs> give him more to do. Uh, he can clean the bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> the caterer. Yeah. So he already has and, it planned out. If there and if if there was people that are trying to beat him up, he he has to he has to call the cops and arrest them. <laughs> yeah, he's security. But Wait. this was at five years old. He had this plan, but then he also said, "And no girls are on the bus." Whoa! So, so yeah. now is that changed? Is that the, that the no rule girls still? gonna be allowed to be on the bus? To it, hang changed. Out? it changed. It changed. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. makes sense. Good. It needs to be all girls on the bus. Now. Yeah, and hot moms. With that. <laughs> <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm doing that eighteen-hour bus ride, you yeah, know you what I mean? Get some that. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't make sense. I got to deal with that scumbag <laughs> bar owner that's going to try to short money. That's right. I got to, you know, he's going to short me two hundred yeah. bucks. You know, you see all of these people get famous looking like I can't wait until I can buy my mom and dad a house, but instead you're like, I can't wait until my dad can drive like the I bus. Used, I used to be in music, and then when I started. Uh, I was the age of seven. I started to get into wrestling, when and then that's when I started like not like don't think non like thinking in music. When I'm trying to play the keyboards, I'm pressing the wrong keys in like five seconds of the song. I'm like, what am I? And, I, and then yeah, every and I time I would, level with and then every time I would go, I would like sing a wrestling theme song. And I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, but in your head. Well, yeah, he was getting in. The, he was starting to get out of music, fade out of music into pro wrestling. You brought him right back. And right, even Jim? his music teacher's like, look, Luke, the, what are you playing with those guys? Those wrestling action figures aren't going to do anything. This music is going to, you know, stick with it. And, he, yeah. you know, he's starting to slowly get out of the wrestling and back into the music. But there was, we, were almost lo- we almost lost him for oh, a little no, while. We can't have that. Well, yeah. how old are you, Luke? Eight? Eight. Yeah. yeah. I don't think being a wrestler is in the cause for you. I don't think you have the frame for that. I don't think that's going to yeah, be Yeah, maybe you could be a manager, you know. Manager for what? One of the wrestlers. Yeah. You know, you could be like, you know, <laughs> classy Freddie Blassie or well, Blue that, Abana, one of those guys. I, like yeah, Leo you, Rush or something? Yeah. Something you grew like up that. big with the wrestling. I know that was yeah. a big thing that you were into, too, with all the pictures and everything. Yeah, and then yeah. I got out of it, and now I'm back into it because he's into it. <laughs> back in. So you so you watch him with him? Yeah. He There's watched, a new he, league, right? Or what do you call it? There, uh, NXT? Is that the new one? <laughs> there's, and they're just trying to do another one. Or oh, like 205 it, Live. There's a, or Impact Wrestling. I can't remember the brand new one I just read about. Yeah, Vince McMahon pretty much has a monopoly on all. He, he buys them all up. Oh, is that what happened? But now there's really? a competing one, guys, that got thrown out of WWE or starting one. I starting forget what one. it's called, but they're uh, going to start 205 one 205 Live. Something yeah. like that, yeah. I, you know, I was going to ask you if, it, is it, if it's more over the top than it even used to be, but it was really over the top back then. Like those days of, this is probably very similar, like the the timelines are similar, like with like Snooka and Georgie Animal Steel and all of those guys back then. Like that was pretty ridiculous, but as a kid, like it was amazing. Like I remember... We have to we have to look at the newspaper to see the results. Yeah, you know, and I'd be like, "Yes, he won." Meanwhile, the whole thing, you know, it's all planned out. You know, um, yeah, they're more ac- they're more athletic these days. Mm-hmm. Definitely jumping off ropes and stuff like that. They're, the the matches were more boring back. Yeah, they were, we were well out of shape. Like they would have like three guys that would be the loser. Like I was one like special delivery Jones. Yeah, SD Jones. He won the like the one piece, and like you knew yeah. when it started, he's gonna lose. He's gonna lose. And he was all like, they were all very doughy and <laughs> were in good Wait, shape. Luke, did you see the Andre the Giant documentary? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sad. Yeah. So sad. You right? also saw like a documentary of like people that are big that like were wrestlers and they were like hall of famers mm. um actually have you ever heard of vader no mm-hmm. yeah you have <laughs> 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 so you still watch Richie? no i just mm-hmm. i uh my friends watched but i was uh I, I know that character yeah um like someone broke into his like farmhouse and one of his parents got kidnapped really uh, I think I think it was. Oh wait! And, and then, what what happened when the pair got kidnapped? Like there was only the father left. It was either the father or the mother got kidnapped. I don't remember. So that that is in real life that happened. Oh, that's messed yeah, up. Yeah, there was a yeah. The WWE has their whole whole network. You could pay ten bucks a month. Right. They have all the matches from the seventies, eighties, nineties. 
all WrestleManias on there, so you can go whack. Can you have... imagine what goes on at this Florentine household? Oh. I love it. It's great. It's just a, you it's know. the best it's thing, it thing really ever. Is. Yeah, it's... I feel like you walk in and there's just drums and like a trampoline. It's like summer camp. <laughs> and uh... a Jägermeister machine in the basement. I just love it. <laughs> Yeah, it is pretty much. Yeah, I'm just like, hey, you're a boy. It's a, it's a boy's house. Yeah, you know, that's good. Yeah, you can you can do pretty much anything you want. And it's it reminds me very much of how it was with my dad. Like there was no, my dad wasn't like you can't watch this or keep me away from things or like try to hide. You know, my, my parents were like that. They were very open, you know, with the humor and everything else. You know, they took me to see. I mean, I was <clears throat> ten years old, I think, and they, they took me to see Raging Bull. So, like, they didn't really care about the content, you know? Yeah. They weren't worried about it turning me into some kind of monster. No, well, he says there's a whole thing where he's like, Dad, I want you to get a girlfriend. I said, well, if I do, we're going to have to compromise what we watch on the TV. Right. Because we'll just watch, like, wrestling and, like, the Three Stooges when he's awake. So, I go, if a girl's over, we're not going to be able to watch that. (laughs) Like, we're going to have to watch, like, Dancing with the Stars or something like that. And he's like, like, no girlfriend. He's like, no, I don't want to watch that. He's like, why can't you just go in the other room? And I go, she can't. Not in the beginning. Yeah. That's it. (laughs) I got to trick her. You know, we got to sit there and take the bull. I go, this is great. I go, in a a year from now, she'll be in the other room. But for now, we're going to, I go, so if wrestling on one night right. we might have to watch Dance with the Stars if she's over right. he's like we'll forget it then <laughs> not worth it yeah, yeah. No, it's not worth it no. for him dad's yeah, but happiness he... is not worth the sacrifice <laughs> right? but he, not with TV but he could help you like that a lot of girls would love that you know that you you have Luke and that you get along so good with him and like oh he's so cute that's your in that's your injury. Yeah, um, yeah, I guess. You got you to gotta work on a routine where he's all like a little innocent. Never going to go innocent. on your show again. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. He doesn't like when people say he's cute. Oh, really? Like we heard that from earlier. Well, I meant that like in a to a, to a woman. <laughs> go ahead, tell me to find you on grind. <laughs> but but like you you could definitely you could help your dad get a, what kind of girlfriend do you want for your dad? You have a, a, a type that you're looking for. Doesn't uh, like a boy kind of girl. What do you mean a boy kind of girl? <laughs> like she would watch boy stuff. She would do boy stuff. Oh, so oh like, like Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> so you mean she, so so she she can hang out with the guy? Yeah, she's almost like a she, guy, but she's a girl. She's cool. Yeah, like she likes football and wrestling. Yeah, right. Like you don't want like her to have a boy hair. And like you know Jim Carrey movies and Adam Sandler movies, that kind of stuff. Yeah, like Jade. Right. Yeah, my right. ex. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we need to. Yeah, all right. So we're looking for someone that's, you know, well, the, she'll, you know, the girl will be like that for the first few months, and then right, she'll ride it out. And then for she'll a while. Be I, I love baseball. I love heavy metal. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah, and love then all of a sudden, you have the <laughs> baseball package for six years. She doesn't watch one game. Right. Like, <laughs> I thought you liked it. I just you know, that's why I got it for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, what what about uh superhero stuff or uh, Star Wars, anything like that? He was into it for a little bit, but then he got out of it. He's more into wrestling. He never really got into Star Wars too much. Rich, uh, I, and he's Luke. Richie's yeah. asking because he's into it now. Well, no, because <laughs> I, I, I listen to your show and I get you know roasted as a fanboy just oh. from by the, some of the stuff you talk about. And I and I think it's hilarious, but I was just wondering how that would be if your son was into all the, the nerd stuff. But thankfully for you, he isn't. <laughs> he was, you know, like the, all the, uh, the Iron Man and all those uh, those act- the superhero guys. Yeah, wow, well, was three. <laughs> yeah, he's not in one. Five years ago. I, th- I, I thought Jim was going to burn me, but I got burned by Luke. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Luke how old you are. Richie. I'm 39. Yeah. Richie, Richie's 39. R- Richie's 39. He's into him. Yeah. You, you, started, you stopped at three. <laughs> you no, know, he's not into him. He's in, Tell him what you, what you make on your own, Richie. I have uh, about 20 lightsabers that I've made. <laughs> Yeah, as, 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 as a grown adult, he's judging you. I'm married, so it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't look like it. Oh, oh man. maybe okay. you recognize him from Grinder, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> Luke, what'd you think of the halftime show with uh, Maroon Five? Oh, terrible. No, know what I said in the middle of it when what? he was singing one of the songs? I said, is that a microphone or a dick he's singing out of? <laughs> I think a lot wow. of people said that. That's <laughs> 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 a good point. 
<laughs> so what do you what did you think when he took off his shirt with all this stupid tattoos? He didn't care about that because gay, 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 gay. <laughs> no, well, I mean, look, every rock star has done that. Like to yeah. me, that wasn't a big deal. Yeah, no. Bon I don't, Scott always had his shirt yeah, off. David Lee Roth, uh, Roth, yeah. Axl Rose, all those guys. Yeah, but Angus like, still goes, you know, takes his shirt off. So it, to me, it wasn't a big deal. Just, no, I don't mean a big deal, but it just doesn't really fit the music. Like to, I don't know, it's just weird. I don't know. It, it was. I don't know why they think now they have to. Because the last couple of selections are absolutely terrible. Like, and when you heard that they were going to do it, it was like that's a terrible idea. Everyone knew it was a terrible idea. You would think Maroon Five would even be like, "That's a just. That's not for us. Like, that's just weird." But the, but they they want to appeal to people that don't watch football. So people that like Maroon Five don't watch football. Yeah, I guess that's you know it's true. the same yeah. thing when you have Beyonce. There's no not one guy in my basement on Sunday is, ever thinks of Beyonce. Beyonce. Yeah, never talked about any Beyonce songs. So they're always appealing to the 13 year old girl that's at the Super Bowl party and all the females that are you know that are going to tune in for the Super Bowl because it's a big party. Yeah, so that's, that's who it. they appeal to. That's why they never have Metallica or an ACDC or a Guns N' Roses. And yeah. to Jim's point, like when I went on, you know I live in a very gay area. Yes. When I looked at social media, my friends that live by me wrote, what time does the Maroon 5 concert uh, start? See? So yeah. he's right. He's on to something here. It yeah. just it, the, the whole like overreach, though, is and try to appeal to as many people as possible never works. Yeah, it doesn't like work she, on anything. Yeah, it's not like they're going to watch that and be like, oh, I, who's my team for next year? Like, it's not going to happen. Uh, Just these... like my cousin. What about your cousin? What? Like, he changes a different team. Mostly, uh, actually, every month. Like, first <laughs> it was... Oh, yeah, he changes. Cowboys, yeah. then Texans, and then now it's Steelers. And then he started getting into, like, the Jaguars for some reason. Yeah, so you can't trust people like that. You got to stick no with loyalty. one team. There's no loyalty. Is that your blood, Jim? This uh, cousin? Jim's a yeah. Do- Jim's a Dolphins fan. He knows what it's like to. When I was a kid, you just year. you know, and he's in the Dolphins and he's into uh, you know the teams I like. But you know, you just stick with it and you just hope they win someday. Yeah. You can't change. I tried one time after they got rid of Marino back in the day. I tried to become a Carolina Panther fan because they were only in the league a couple of years. So I was so mad at Miami for getting rid of him. And I bought the hat. And I remember opening that. I didn't even watch a Dolphin game. <laughs> I watched a Panther game. By week two, I was back at Dolphin. You're back, right? I, go, yeah. I can't do this. You can't do it. Couldn't. You can't do it. Like, I'm, I always get shit because I'm a Steeler fan. And everybody's like, oh, you're a Steeler fan because they're always good. And blah, blah, blah. Well, when I was a kid, that was the team that was on all the time. Yeah. And yeah, they were winning all the time. So yeah, I, I was a Steelers fan for sure. But then I had 20 years of garbage that I had to live with before they got good again. Yeah. You know, nobody nobody ever gives you credit for that, Luke. They should think. just do away with the halftime show because they're running an axe, and they want the NFL wants to play it safe. Yeah, they they're do. not going to book a Metallica because that's not going to appeal to, you know, the younger audience and stuff like that. Like, who are these old guys that are just making this loud noise? Even though, you know, they would know most of the songs that they would play. Yeah, they would. In that, you know. Metallica seems to be the one that everyone, because you know, you think it's too heavy for the NFL. The closest thing that is Aerosmith, but they can they know how to do an arena show. That's that's the big thing. It's like right. uh, you know, Rune Five. If you like them, you don't like them, whatever. But they're not like a big arena band. Yeah, but they're also not going to have like tons of kids with glow sticks in front, like they put because they make it more than just the band. It's always a thing. It should know? be it should be Van Halen. That's the end of the end of story. Well, Van the Halen. thing is, to also every pop act has eighty five people on stage, yeah, yeah. running around. So the stage well, is always it. busy. So when you just had four dudes up there playing, they were like, "This is boring." But that's that's a rock show. Yeah, yeah. I would love to see. Van- I I still, you know, I have not seen them with Dave again. I don't know how is. I know his voice is not what it used to be, but they're still great. I, I still want to see twenty seven songs. Uh, that's amazing. If you see them early in the tour, but they, the problem is they do like five shows a week. That's too many shows. When they do it, but is, is he done now with them, or is he? No, I don't know. They don't say anything. They just pop up after four years. Yeah, and then just like, they hide, and all of a sudden they're and then you know, they're out with somebody. Yeah, I have I, a question. Go. Oh. <laughs> um, you th- you think, Laura, think you think Lori has extensions? Is that your question? <laughs> no. She doesn't. Um. I think Maroon Five is really gay, mm-hmm. and um, I think if some husband at at the uh, football game and they had to watch the Maroon Five, maybe like they were, imagine if they were counting to their ABCs. They stopped that X. They pointed at their wife. They say, "You're my ex-wife," and then they <laughs> say, "Oh, sorry, I'm on with Maroon Five. I found them on Grinder." <laughs> <laughs> So right then they get to see Maroon Five. They're gonna break up their wife and turn gay. 
because they saw Maroon 5. All right. <laughs> He's a good looking man, so it could happen. I could see that, you know, <laughs> it's possible. He's got a great last name. I think you were one of the person that. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> well, he plays with, he likes comic books. You can't go with You him. know what Lori's last name is? Levine. There was Adam Levine. Lori Levine. Yeah. Would you? Well, I I have a te- my one the teachers is in my school is Miss uh I think it's um I forgot but her last name is Levine. Well, you know what? You can't even spell Florentine without Lori. Oh, look at that! I can do it. F L O R T. Oh, I messed it up. F L O R T I N E. Luke, on this tour bus, would Lori be allowed on the bus? Yeah, is Lori allowed on? Because I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, I've love known the Lori. Horn. I've known Lori for a long time. How long? Probably like 15 years. Could she come on the bus? Jeez. What are you you it doesn't matter how long I know her, but can she come on the bus? Yes or no? She's a friend of mine. Let him let him answer. You knew, you knew her since you were thirty nine. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Good math. Yeah. So can she come on the bus? Um. It's not an instant I yes. Don't know. But it's not a no yet. All right, it's not a no. <laughs> can I have to work for that? <laughs> I don't know. Think about it. Don't you? You don't have to answer I now. I don't know. Okay, I'll take that right I... now. All right. <laughs> well. Jim, I want to thank you for coming on. Do we want to, put, Rich? You want to jam out a little bit for us? Oh, sure. I like to. I like to have Rich. Luke, you want to sing? Entertain you. Want I to would sing love song? to hear that. Oh, yeah. Gosh. Well, maybe uh, Richie knows a song. You know. Oh. What song do you want to sing? What band do you know? Do you know Stone Sour? I don't. Sorry. Slipknot. How about Black Sabbath? <laughs> yeah. Iron oh. Man. Electric Funeral. <laughs> <laughs> do you know Heaven and Hell? No, he you know, fairies wear boots. Oh man! Oh, I, I don't know all the words to that. War pigs. <laughs> I don't know them. Uh... Don't call call him up on the phone. No. All right, <laughs> Ozzy. You know Crazy Train. Yeah. I don't know that either. Do you know any Ozzy songs? No. <laughs> You don't know any. You don't know any Ozzy. No, all of a sudden you don't know any yeah, songs I except for Stone dead. Sour. Uh, and maybe Iron Man. I know Iron Man. You don't want to do a Maroon Five song? <laughs> 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 no. For your grinder profile. Uh, you got this, Luke. <laughs> Jim's pulling up the lyrics for him. Yeah. There you go. Okay. You ready? I am Iron <laughs> Man. <laughs> Here we go. He was lost his mind. Can he see or is he blind? Have he walk at all? Or if he moves, will he fall? Is he alive or dead? Has he thought within his head? He'll just pass him there. Why should he weave and care? Nobody wants him He just stars at the world Pl- Plan his vengeance that he will soon on flood Now the time is here for Iron Man who choose by fear Vengeance from the grave But vengeance from the gr- uh, this grave. This is already better than right. Maroon Five. Kills the people he once saved. Nice. Good job, Luke. Nice. All right. Nice job. Why'd you hold it? Um, 
because it was easier for you to read instead of you looking down. That if you want him I'm to be a professional, a, if you want him to be your, your <laughs> that's why. Yeah, if you want him to be your roadie, he's got to do stuff like that. He's got to get your no, water ready. He's got to get your I beers can't ready. I buy it myself. No, it's easier, Rob. Everybody, was it easier if I held it so yes, he's looking? I yes, b- I believe it was. Because you're looking like this, and you're going over like this, and you're going off mic. Believe me. And then I'm going like this. <laughs> 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 well, look, it was off the cuff. Yep. It was just, you know, on the spot. We didn't rehearse. It That's a, what happens. It was a good performance off the cuff. We were jamming. That's it all. It was better yeah. than Maroon 5. At no point did I feel like I was going to go gay. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> you could have taken your shirt off, Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that, I want that happen. <laughs> Does it say New Jersey? <laughs> 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 Jim, thank you very much again. Luke, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. Same with you, Richie. I really, I know everybody should check out Jim Florentine's Comedy Metal Midgets on Riotcast, yes. iTunes, everywhere. It literally is exactly what we say. It's just Jim ripping on shit for a good forty-five <laughs> minutes, and it's so funny. Like there are tears in my eyes a lot of the times. Like every the I gender just, reveal parties is a big one. Now. <laughs> yeah. That one I just can't get enough of. Yeah, it is the, just. Oh. Pink or blue bl- b- um, balloons? Because if it, the pink balloons go up, it's a girl. If the blue balloons go up, <laughs> yeah, it's a boy. Why there's a. Why'd you just tell me over the phone? <laughs> there's a- Payback. Yeah, there's that's a- karma. <laughs> it, it, it's not that gay guy butting your ass. It's karma. <laughs> He's doing my act now. <laughs> what are you gonna say, Richard? No, there's a. I just had to. I had to ask. There's a voice you do when you really don't like something. You think it's lame, and you your voice gets like really high. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I was wondering if you could like teach how to do that because I I, <laughs> I need to know how you do that. Wait, is that when I'm? Uh, wait, hold on. When I'm re- reading like a Yelp review or something. Yeah. <laughs> when the woman's in like a panic. Yeah. <laughs> And when she's like, you know, I, I went to an IHOP yesterday <laughs> and I was so hungry and I just wanted to eat. And when I got there, it was 15 minute wait and I was so hungry. And I, did, I don't understand the way. And the hostess wouldn't even look me in the eye. It's like, what kind of services? Is she just said it's going to be 15 minutes and didn't even look at me. And then we sat down and there was a crumb on the table. And I didn't know if I should walk out. I, I was so hungry. I stayed. <laughs> yeah, he'll just read like one Yelp review after another it's fantastic there's a voice like when you're like genuinely disgusted with somebody like oh did you put your thing over here yeah. you know, is it, that, you, that's the voice yeah you, did, did and they put the water right on the table <laughs> right next to my meal <laughs> <laughs> now, who puts it on the right side of the meal I don't know. <laughs> but you, 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 you're so right like with the gender reveals and now, and now the new thing is like for every shower now it's a man and women shower like the one thing guys didn't have to do is go to showers and now they have like these uh, where the, the husbands all go to the shower and ugh. no one else you see people that share social media couples that yes have, with both of their names on it ugh. i hate those people I, yeah it's brutal it's brutal and you'll get all of that from jim because yes. you, no, pe- people that listen will just find this stuff they go this is probably gonna annoy jim and they just send <laughs> it in i don't even know about it and i'm like all right i'll go yeah, yeah definitely i can, I can what annoying this. trends are you seeing besides these gender reveals well that's yeah that's a big one just uh, pe- the, the challenges on on um oh yeah on social media you know whatever right. the new challenge is you know, that, that's a big one. Everyone has to, you know, since everybody else is doing it, I guess I got to do everybody it. Everybody knows that I would never do that. I've never been included in a challenge because they know it would just be useless. <laughs> I would, I I'll just shut it off and sit down. And, then, and that would be it. Wouldn't even bother me. One thing I do find funny is when you first came up with Luke, I was, I cursed once. I was like, oh my God, I cursed. But now I realize that I that really, that <laughs> I realize that that really doesn't matter. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I said, I, I said, fuck in the beginning. I was like, well, <laughs> shit. then. No, we're from New Jersey. Yeah. Exactly. Luke, you were awesome, bro. You can come back anytime. Yeah. Jim, you once in a while you can come back too. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you again, everybody. Thanks for listening to the whole Later no fucks.